Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the Humongous. Donald Trump and his gang have figured out a surefire way to defeat the Democratic Party presidential candidate in 2020. No matter who that candidate is, paint the Democrats as a pack of crazed socialists determined to seize America by the throat. Paint them as an angry mob of communists out to transform the USA into a totally socialist state. Paint the Democrats as a gang hell-bent on turning the land of the free and the brave into a starving nation like Venezuela. Yes, Venezuela, where the supermarket shelves are empty and citizens wait in long lines hoping to buy the ingredients for just one meal for the day. Venezuela, where three million people, 10% of the country's citizens, have fled. But is America really on the verge of being converted to a Marxist hell by Democrats? This sort of hysteria around the word socialism is not unique to our time. It showed up over 80 years ago when Franklin Roosevelt started his New Deal. Social security, said the conservatives of the 1930s, was socialism. Federal deposit insurance was socialism. These programs, said the conservative hysterics, would do to America what the October Revolution of 1917 had done to Russia. Russia had been on the rise economically and technologically in 1913. But when the totalitarian socialists, Lenin and Stalin, seized power in 1917, they created poverty and starvation. In fact, leading conservative economist Paul Skousen says that Franklin Roosevelt succeeded in his evil socialist plot. Roosevelt, says Skousen, turned America into a democratic socialist republic. But the conservative predictors of a socialist end of the world in America were wrong in the days of Franklin Roosevelt 84 years ago, and they are wrong today. Why? I spent seven years wandering in the literary wilderness without a publisher because I insisted on writing a book to help save Western civilization. Now, admittedly, saving Western civilization is a big job. It's something that I simply cannot achieve on my own but it's something to which I have to make as much of a contribution, small as that is, as I can. The book, To Save Western Civilization, was finally published in 2009. It's called The Genius of the Beast, A Radical Revision of Capitalism. The Genius of the Beast says the Western system works because of a balance. It works because of a moving balance between three elements. What are those three elements? Business, government, and the protest industry. When we got Social Security in 1935, that increased the weight of government in the trio of business, government, and the protest industry in the moving balance. And when we got Medicare in 1965, the government role once again increased. But did these government programs kill off private initiative? Did Social Security and Medicare kill business? Or to put it differently, did a touch of socialism kill private companies? not on your life. In 1935, when Social Security began, the Dow Jones stock market average was at 100. Today it is over 26,000. Yes, the stock market has gone from 100 to 26,000. It's now at 260 times its 1935 value, which is fucking astonishing. More important, the stock market is a measure of how America's private industry is doing, and American private industry is cleaning up. It's doing spectacularly in spite of Social Security and Medicare? Or could that spectacular soar be because of Social Security and Medicare? We'll get back to that question in a minute. The real deal is this. Democratic candidates are not gunning for the government to put private companies out of business and to seize the means of production. They are not pumping for the sort of nationalization of every industry in sight that is starving Venezuela. Far from it. The Democrats are pushing for a hidden form of corporate welfare. The Democrats are pushing for improvements in systems that produce something private industry needs desperately. The Dems are pushing for a labor force of intelligent, well-educated, healthy workers. The Democrats are pushing for free higher education, free college and free university. The college and university education Democrats are calling for produces precisely the kind of workers American companies complain that they can't get enough of. Then there's health insurance for all. Health insurance for all means companies do not have to pay for the expense of your medical insurance. That's a big 
burden taken off the backs of big corporations and small businesses. More important, if you are a boss, you can put years into training your top people. If one of those people's family is hit with a medical emergency and can't pay for it, you lose that high-level person to debt and a kind of stress that can kill, a level of debt and stress that can destroy your indispensable worker's life. I know because when I founded and ran the biggest PR firm in the record industry, the Howard Bloom Organization Limited, I put years into training each member of my staff. The loss of one of those staff members to personal illness or an illness in the family would have been devastating. I ran a small company, but the Democrats are fighting just as hard for welfare for big corporations. The fact is that if you are Walmart or McDonald's, so-called socialist programs subsidize you. How? You count on food stamps, Medicaid, and subsidized public housing. You count on so-called socialism. After all, you are paying minimum wage. And without government subsidies that keep your employees going, you'd have no employees. In other words, big business benefits from so-called socialist programs. Big time business benefits big time. That's one of the reasons the stock market has soared in the 84 years since Social Security was created. Yes, it's true that average Americans benefit from so-called entitlements. You and I benefit. But big business and the rich benefit even more. The rich, the poor, and the middle class all gain from the Western system's shifting balance between business, government, and the protest industry. And that balance needs a measured amount of the form of corporate welfare that some Democrats and Republicans call, guess what? Socialism. This is Howard the Humongous speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make. Or, <laughs> want to know why? Ask how. And now for the sleazy, sneaky, slimy, insidious little off button.